What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we saw the indices going up across the board and we had a very green day. Is this just a bull trap before we go down more or is this the real deal and we're out of the woods and we're going to brand new all time highs? First up, let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100 Triple Q's ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, so if you've been following along on my channel, you know that I'm expecting an ABC tech correction, and I do have reason to believe that we did finish that A wave, and I said get ready for that B wave bounce, and we did see a continuation of Friday's green day on the tech sector today going up 3%, which means that it confirms that we're likely in this B wave. Now the B wave is a little bit tricky because we need to let the price action tell us where the B wave is going to end. So right now we're looking for something that looks somewhat like this, where we'll go down in an A wave, bounce in a B wave, and then come back down to finish out the tech correction with a C wave. Now don't worry too much about where I'm putting the C wave, because right now we need to focus on what's in front of us and we're still likely in this B wave up. Now the one thing about the B wave is that we could have actually reached the top of the B wave with today's price action. It's very likely that this could be a bull trap because it's going to feel right and everything's going to feel like the market wants to go to brand new all time highs, and it's going to pull the bulls in right before we go back down for wave C. That's why it's called a bull trap. Remember, it's called a bull trap because it's a trap and it's tricky. If the market ropes you in and you feel great about buying, that's when you know you're likely getting trapped. How often do you buy something and feel good about it and then actually make money on that trade? Normally, it's the trades that feel the worst that make the most amount of money. Believe me, in the Stocks Channel Discord, when I was telling people that we had support at the bottom of this A wave and that we likely bottomed, and I was actually buying myself, there were plenty of people, and you may be one of these people, who thought I was absolutely nuts and thought I was buying a falling knife and that I was buying before we went even lower. However, because that buy didn't feel good, it made the most amount of money and we were handsomely rewarded with this B wave bounce. So right now, if you're not in this market and this market is trying to convince you to come in by going up like this, it could be a bull trap. It doesn't mean it has to be a bull trap, but just keep it in mind because you're much better off preparing for the worst case scenario and then being surprised than you are not preparing for the worst case scenario and losing a lot of money. So right now with the B wave, it is possible that we did top out today, but because I'm calling this a bull trap, it is still possible that we're going to gap up in the morning and possibly go as high as 327. Anywhere between 326 and 330 on the triple Qs is likely going to be the top of the B wave. So I'm looking for the B wave to end between 324 and 330, and we're going to let the price action tell us when the B wave is over. After the B wave completes, we'll likely go down for a C wave, and right now the C wave is possible where we don't even go as low as the A wave and we truncate before we continue to go higher. That's the bullish scenario because that means a lot of buyers are stepping in and they're buying up the dip, which is stopping the C wave from going lower than the A wave. But it's also possible the C wave goes lower than the A wave or much lower than the A wave. So we'll play it day by day and we'll continue to watch the price action. But right now, I just want you to be prepared for a possible bull trap in the tech sector. So in order to look at when this B wave is going to end, we need to jump over to a one hour chart. And if you were following along in last week's videos, you already know that I counted five waves down to complete wave A, and I am expecting the B wave to go up in an ABC pattern. Well, as you can tell, this is playing out exactly how we had planned for it and exactly how I explained to you last week, and we're currently in an ABC up. So right now, the question is, when is the C wave going to end? And that will answer when the B wave ends on the daily chart. So right now, we're still in an upward trend, so I don't want to call the top on the B wave until I see where the price action pivots and makes a turn for the C wave. If you're on the Stocks Channel Discord, you can rest assured that you will be the first to know when I see that pivot and I will alert you in the Discord server. So right now I'm looking for the C wave to end anywhere between 324 and 330. Once we pivot from that high and start heading lower, I'm going to go ahead and start counting down the waves towards wave C and then we'll see where wave C bottoms. At that point, I'm looking to get long in this market because I still do think that we're in a secular bull market and after a correction, we usually resume to the upside in five waves, which is where we will make the majority of our money coming out of this correction. So right now you're better off to be defensive and prepare for a C wave down than you are to try to get bull trapped into this market thinking it's going to brand new all time highs just in time for it to pivot and head much lower. So going back to the daily chart, you can see that the price action was very bullish today and we did close over top of the five EMA. We did find resistance below the 13 EMA and we're still trading below the 20 simple moving average. We're still trading above the 50 EMA, which is bullish, but you can see that we are still on a bear trend. 
The 5 EMA is still below the 13 EMA, and that defines a bearish trend in the short term. Remember, I always tell you this, when the trend is bearish, I want to be defensive, and I don't want to be looking to go too long in this market when we're in a bear trend. Bear trends can easily pick up momentum, and selling usually takes the elevator down. So I don't want to be too exposed to the long side in a market that has a bearish trend. So there's no doubt looking at this chart that the triple Qs is still in a bearish trend, and you can see Thursday's close that we did form a lower low on the daily chart. So the question is now, are we also going to form a daily lower high? We already have the daily lower low, and then we're expecting a C wave down. So you better believe it that I'm being defensive and I'm not looking to have too much long exposure in this market. So with that being said, look for resistance above at 324, 326, and 327. If we break above 327, if we break above 327, I'm going to be looking for this gap to fill above around 330. To the downside support, we could still find support at the 50 EMA at 319, and then the previous lows around 313 and 311, which is where the A wave ended. If we break below 311, it's very likely we're coming down to 308 or possibly even all the way down to 297. So there's still plenty of downside potential in this market when this B wave does finally end and we do start into a C wave. So be prepared for the worst case scenario, which would mean that we're coming all the way back to triple Q's levels of possibly 297, and that would also fill the gap down here that we still have at 302. So know all of these scenarios and then let the price action tell us which scenario is going to play out. That's the best way to trade this market and prepare yourself for any situation. Next up is the S&P 500 SPY ETF and we saw the SPY going up 2.42% today and closing back above the 20 simple moving average. You could see that the SPY is also still in a bear trend because the 5 EMA is still trading below the 13 EMA. So just like with the triple Qs, it's possible this is still a bull trap. And don't forget that the SPY ETF has over 30% tech sector. So if the tech sector is going lower in a wave C, it's definitely going to drag the SPY ETF down with it. It likely won't go as low as the tech sector because we are seeing strength in the other sectors, but that doesn't go without saying that it's going to go lower. So watch support levels around 387, 384, and 381. Just below 381, we do have the 50 EMA at 379. If the correction in the C wave goes deeper, we're likely going to fill the gap on the SPY ETF at 377. That should be a very strong support level. And if you watch the weekend video, that's also a weekly support level, which is going to make sure this is a strong support. And if that breaks down, it could mean we're going much lower. So 377 is one of those critical support levels that we need to hold up above in order to remain in this bull market. Now, as far as resistance levels on SPY goes, there's only one more left above us, which is the previous all-time high around SPY levels of 393. So remember, if we start breaking and closing above 393, that will be a bullish indication that we're going to new all-time highs, and that could invalidate that the queues are going lower. So if we do close above 393 on SPY, that is going to be a very bullish indication, and that could mean that we're going up to the next SPY target at 404. But right now we need to see the price action confirm that that's the case and right now we're still trading below that resistance level. On the SPY ETF you can see that's still lower highs but we still do have a higher low on SPY as compared to the low that we saw back here on January 29th. So remember when we're in a bearish trend we want to remain defensive and we want to let the price action in the trend repair these charts before we get too bullish back to the upside. On the Dow Jones ETF we went up 1.98% and we're back to closing above all of the moving averages and we're back in a bullish trend. The 5 EMA is back above the 13 EMA and we're still trading above the positive sloping 20 simple moving average. So the Dow is looking really good, but we did find resistance intraday at this resistance level at 316. So watch to see if we can break above 316. And if we do, we could be heading back up to the all time high, which is at 320. My price target is still above at 322. So continue watching that level as well. To the downside support, we should see support around 313, and if we break below that, we have the 50 EMA at 308. On the ARK-K ETF, we went up 4.86% today, and we did close above the 5 EMA, but we're still trading below the 50 EMA. So the 50 EMA is still going to be resistance right around 137, and we do have another resistance level above at 142. So ARK-K is also going through somewhat of an ABC bounce, and there could still be more downside in the ARK ETFs before we find the bottom and start heading higher. So as far as support levels go, watch 135, 124, and then the gap closed down at 117. On the VIX, we went down over 16% today, and we're trading right on top of that 20 simple moving average. We blasted through both support levels, which were old resistance, and we failed to see the VIX hold up above that breakout level. 
This is a bullish indication because low fear means the market is likely to go to new all-time highs. However, with the VIX, you can see we're still in the process of trying to form higher highs and potentially higher lows. That means we're not out of the woods yet and we need to see more price action to see if the VIX is going back to those elevated levels. Remember that with corrections and massive sell-offs, we're going to see a spike in the VIX, so pay close attention to see if the VIX is going higher or lower because that will tell us what to expect. Next up is Bitcoin and I want to do Bitcoin after the indices because I want to show you that Bitcoin could be pretty good at predicting the future in the stock market. Don't forget that Bitcoin is a 24-7 market and it did trade over the weekend while the stock market was closed. As you can see on Bitcoin, I can switch this over to a lower chart, which is the 4-hour chart, and you can see that it does look like we finished this ABC correction and Bitcoin is starting to head higher. On this Bitcoin chart, we are forming higher highs after this ABC correction, which could be hinting towards a future as what's likely to happen with the triple Qs in the NASDAQ 100. Like I said, I expect to see a C wave down. And with Bitcoin trading through Saturday and Sunday, we see that Bitcoin is also going through an ABC correction before its bull market resumes. So is this predicting the future on the NASDAQ 100? Well, only time will tell, but watch the price action closely because we could be seeing a very similar sign. Also note that the C wave on Bitcoin went just below the A wave. So that's another thing that I want to pay close attention to. So going back to the daily chart, it does look like Bitcoin is well on its way going back into this bull market and we are seeing very nice price action and we're currently trying to close above the 20 simple moving average. My price targets above on Bitcoin are 54,700 and if we can break and close over that level, we could be heading to my next price target at 62,500. So whether or not Bitcoin is predicting what's likely to happen in the stock market is to be determined. But right now, just remember that Bitcoin is a risky market and if we're seeing bullish price action in Bitcoin, it could mean that investor sentiment is still risk on and we still have plenty of money coming into these markets to drive them higher. Overall, that's a bullish indication, so we want to keep that in our back pocket. On the US dollar, we continue to see strength building and we did go up 0.14% today. We're closing over top of the 50 EMA and we could definitely see some bullish trending getting ready to build. So the question on the dollar is, is it going to break resistance at 91 and start heading higher? A strong dollar could put stress on the stock market However, the dollar is still at relatively weak levels, so if the market is bullish, it might not have that much impact. We still do have a support level below around 90.6 that could still act as support if the dollar does try to fall. So watch the dollar closely because it could be giving us a hint at what's going to happen in the future. On gold, we continue to see capitulation and gold is likely heading to the 1680s. We're failing to find support and we're just basically in a free fall mode where everybody is capitulating out of gold and running for the hills. This could be something to do with Bitcoin or it could be something completely different. But right now, you just want to wait for gold to find support before you jump into this market. Right now, it's like trying to catch a falling knife. And when it does finally bounce, we will be looking for it to test the 1760s as a resistance level. On silver, we see the price action holding up above the 50 EMA, which is at 2645. Currently on silver, we're also seeing a huge shell off and we're also seeing some bearish trending developing. So look for silver to try to hold up as support here and we could possibly test the price target at 2750. However, if this level breaks down, it's likely we're coming back down to support at $25. On Amazon, we did bounce off support at 3090 and we went up 1.72% today. We closed above the 5 EMA, but we still have a lot of work to do to get this chart looking bullish. We're still chopping around in corrective patterns and we're going sideways. So we need to see if Amazon can break back into this consolidation wedge and try to break out to the upside. Resistance levels above are going to be 3170, 3220, and 3280. Watch those levels very closely because Amazon is still in a sideways correction and if it does start to break out to the upside, it could start to run. On Tesla, we went up 6.36% today, but we're still closing below a negative sloping 50 EMA. The trend is still very bearish and we still have a very strongly negative sloping 20 simple moving average. So right now, it's impossible to be bullish on Tesla looking at the trend and the price action because both of them are just screaming bear market. Until we get a close above the 50 EMA around 745, it's not even worth talking about possible bull market potential with Tesla. We need the price action and the trend to start reversing back to a bull market, otherwise we're still going much lower. Watch support levels below at 690 and 618. On Apple stock, we went up a huge amount today, going up 5.39% and finding resistance at the 13 EMA right around 128. We did break through the resistance level at 126, but we're still trading below the 50 EMA with a negative sloping 20 simple moving average. So there's no doubt that Apple is still looking bearish. The price action is below the 50 EMA and we're in a very strong bear trend. 
So on Apple, I would not be surprised to see us go down one leg lower and possibly a fifth wave on this chart, retesting the lows around 120 or possibly even going as low as 114 to finish out this pattern. So that could coincide with a C wave on the NASDAQ 100 because if Apple is going down for another leg lower, it's very likely that the triple Qs is going down for another leg lower as well. So Apple could be telling us one of the most important stories of all, and we just need to watch the price action to see if it's going to confirm that theory. On the financial sector, we went up a whopping 3.13% today, and we still have bullish price action with a bullish trend. On the industrials, we went up 2.56% today, and we're still closing over the 5 EMA with a very strong bull trend. On the energy sector, we continue to look bullish, going up 2.6%, closing over the 5 EMA with a very strong bull trend. On the healthcare sector, we went up 1.31%, but we're still in a bearish pattern. We're closing below the 50 EMA with a bear trend. So the healthcare sector is still looking weak. So going back to the S&P 500, we still see bullish sectors in the financials, the industrials, and the energy sector, and we're still potentially looking at weakness in the healthcare and the tech sector. However, it is possible the tech sector is rebounding and we're going higher from here, which could help the S&P 500 go to brand new all-time highs. So continue to watch the resistance level at the previous all-time high very closely, which is right around 393. If we break and close over that level, we're back into a bull market and we could start looking back for brand new all-time highs. But until we break above that level, I want you to be defensive and remember that we still have some bearish trending in the tech sector as well as the S&P 500. Don't forget that it's fully possible that SPY is going to close this gap at 377 before this bull market resumes. So remember, if you're looking for a disciplined and profitable trading community, come check out the Stocks Channel Discord. You can find out how to join the Stocks Channel Discord by clicking on the link in the description of this video. So next up, let's do a quick look at our hot stock, Lockheed Martin. And remember that Lockheed Martin did hit three of our price targets. And we can see that ever since Lockheed Martin hit three of our price targets, we did see massive selling. And we're currently trying to hold up on this support level at 333. If Lockheed Martin breaks down below this level, it's not worth trying to trade the stock anymore because that means a critical support level is breaking down and we could be heading much lower. If we bounce off this level, these price targets are going back into effect and they're still at 340, 344, and 348. If we can get back above these levels, we could make another attempt at the last price target at 357. So if you want more hot stocks, I am bringing them to the Discord server and you can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember to be disciplined and defensive in this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.